Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Smart Bourbon Podcast. I'm your host, Perry. With me this week, it's Aaron. Whiskey Mutant present. What Sitting up? next to the bear that pairs it. Ooh. T-I-M-B. You do got bars. You know who we be. Down with OPP? Always. I heard somebody analyzing the lyrics to OPP recently and how dirty they are. Everything's dirty. If you, you can make anything on, dirty. Depending on how you think about it, it's, everything's dirty. We all adults. <laughs> yeah, hopefully there's no children listening to This Is My Bourbon Podcast. That's a thing I've said multiple times on this Dad show. Dad heard me the other day because I had it on. I was like, I can't remember what I said about that. And I said the F word. <laughs> 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 what were we talking about? I don't remember. It was toward the end, and I was probably said F in this or something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Something. Yeah. Well, if it's your first time here, thank you for showing up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. If you would like to leave us a five star rating and review, and you have not done yet, done not done yet, not done so yet. There we go. Uh, you could do that in your podcast app of choice. It'd be great if you did it in the Apple Podcast app, so we could read that review When's- out here. When? And it's been a long time since we've had a review. I was going to say, when's the last time we read a review? Um, Since Chad's updated one. It's been a long time. Shouldn't left you. Without, Without you, my friend. You to step two, step two, step two. And I sure will by when I see you again. It's Charlie huh. Puth. <laughs> you got some bass going on over there. I, I'm still, I'm not, I don't feel bad. I don't feel sick. But I just have so much head congestion right You're now. Sick though, I'm sick with two C's. Sick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just have, I have congestion, and it's, it's annoying. Uh, but I'm going to try to minimize it as much as I can throughout this. the episode. You got this. You can also follow us on social media. I am at my bourbon pod. Eric is whiskey mutant. Check out all of our apparel and merchandise. Bourbonshop.threadless.com and whiskeymutant.myshopify.com. We both have. Some sales going on, some holiday stuff. We've got some new shirts up, some new apparel, some new merchandise uh, up on the Threadless store. My favorite is the coffee mug that says Christmas mornings are for, or Christmas morning means bourbon. Yeah, I like that. It's so good. I like Uh, that. I'm so happy with that one. Uh, Santa's favorite bourbon drinker. Oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of good stuff happening over there. Uh, And then last but not least, Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash rubber podcast for as little as a dollar a month, for as little as five dollars a month. Pretty weird bonus this week. content. This week was Pretty weird. weird. That was the weirdest we've ever gotten <laughs> on on, pa- on Patreon fault. stuff. Don um, Nishita made me weird. <laughs> go, go find out about that. Yeah. Uh we are gonna get into a big conversation. Uh, that stems from one that we had a couple of weeks ago about the state of the relationship between bourbon consumers and bourbon retailers. Uh, we are also going to get into a review of the newest edition oh, of the Parker's Heritage baby. Collection. So stick around for that. But first, Eric and I have done something that we <sighs> rarely is, this, do. This may be a big segment right here. This is a double uh, sips and snacks. Double. So, do you want to go first? I think I need to go first. I think you should go first. Okay. So, I prepared something here. Perry does not know this. I kept it a secret. I have also kept mine a secret from yes. Eric. So, okay. it's also like a flying blind. Yes. Like we're going to do this all snacks. Yeah, Okay. I dig it. So, uh, right. Also, if you, if you are new to the show or if you need a refresher, flying blind is a segment that we do uh, kind of every other week where we blind each other on something to kind of get our palates warmed up for the episode. Sips and snacks is where we pour something and then we pair it with something, usually a snack cake or something indulgent. My knife? Yeah, I'm opening this for the first time. Oh. I made this all in my head. I hope it's good. Oh, I kind of did the same thing, man. <laughs> so I'm going to do, I'm going to pour it for us. And then I want you to kind of do a flying blind with just the pour. And then, okay. because I can't really hide the snack that we're doing, so then we'll talk about it, and then I'll tell you why I uh, paired it. I'm going to have a hard time hiding the uh, my snack as, as well. You are so. a snack. Brother. In many ways. <laughs> <laughs> snack with two C's. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a thing. Nobody says that. Um, I also want to, at, at some point, kind of talk about 
Eric and Eric and I kind of discussed this beforehand, but uh, I want to talk about what 2023 is going to look like for the podcast and all of the the Timbip extended universe stuff that we do. Uh, so be on the lookout for that here in just a bit. All right, you're already here. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> They're like, okay, I'll come back. We're gonna get. We're gonna get there. All right. First time I've had this. First time you've had this. I know. And then we'll pair it. Okay. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Right. Baby. That smells good. I've never had this. No. We have neither of us have never had this. I know for a fact, unless you've been hiding something. And from this me. is the the purchase that you made. Yes, this is my. I had a little bit of extra money before Christmas, and I purchased this. Oh, <laughs> it's rich and like dark. Almost blueberry. Like I kind of get like a dark chocolate brownie. Oh, yeah. It's like there's chocolate and there's like, is everything dark about this? Oh. 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 God. Oh. Wow. Wow. What the crap is this? <laughs> Whoa. Dude, that might have made that might have moved up to the top of the list right there. Gosh, it's chocolate and fruit and like just it's rich. Oh my, this is gonna be. I already know it's gonna be a great pairing. Mm. <laughs> my mind is racing <laughs> as to what this could be <laughs> you needed my knife to open it yeah i couldn't find that it didn't have a little it didn't thingy. have the perforation yeah which means it's not an antique collection bottle no would you put this on an antique collection level yeah okay um There's only one other guess that I have for this that could maybe fall into all of these categories. Is it the Russell's Reserve single Rick House? No. I didn't have that much extra money for Christmas. Well, I didn't I didn't know. I don't know what this is. The fact that you compared it to that is that's a win though. Yeah. Are you ready? Oh my Wilderness oh my Trail gosh. Maple Finished Rye. They still had some, and I ran down there yesterday before uh, I took a nap, and I got us a You bottle. ran down to Wilderness Trail? Well, I drove down there. You know what I mean? Like Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, I ran. <laughs> like Macaulay. <laughs> Save me a bottle. <laughs> yeah. No, they, had, they still had some. Well, this is going to be awkward because... My poor for my Simpsons. <laughs> Yours is a truck. Trail and what did we have on the pregame chats? <laughs> yeah, Wilderness Trail, trail Ride. ride. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> um, it was strategic, though. Like, I wanted you to get your palette ready for your Wilderness Trail Rye. Well, you pulled that out in the pregame chats, and I saw that go, oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> what is going on right now? Oh, uh, we're synced up, man. 98.3 proof. And this one's 100.9. 
Damn, barely a hundred. Yeah. This was and is my very first bottle of Wilderness Trail Rye. Damn. Curtis and I actually split this bottle. Nice. Way back in the day. Uh, it's a single barrel, but yeah, those uh, early ones weren't weren't picks. They were straight off the shelf single yeah. barrel. You want to pair this? Well, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and get this poured up for us as well. So, another cool thing about the distillery is they had they had the maple that this was finished in. So I bought a bottle of the maple. Oh my god! That this was collaborated with, and I toasted us up some French toast sticks. <laughs> and we are going to do maple bourbon maple syrup French toast sticks paired with Wilderness Trail maple finish dry. This is a big moment for me. <laughs> I even got a little dip in cup. Oh, to dip it in there. Good idea. That is a that is a daggone good so call. This is Woods Bourbon Barrel Aged Maple Syrup, and this is the syrup that was used in this whole process. So, this whiskey is phenomenal, just dude, right off the bat. I was so happy. I'm I'm very pleased with that. It tastes so much older than it probably. I mean, it's got to be what, like four years old? Uh, five, I think. Is it? It says. Hold on. Um. Walker Woodfield Distillery Select presents our first finished release, combining maple syrup's complexity with rye whiskey's spiciness. Maple syrup from Vermont was aged in our rye whiskey barrels. After uh, removing the syrup, the barrels were returned and filled with five-year-old rye whiskey, then aged six months. Enjoy the pairing, this unique pairing. Man. Who do we have to thank for this? Is this a Haley thing? Is this a Macaulay, Macaulay thing? He this, did this. He with, did this? Yeah. Dang. He, yeah. I'm going to be a little I've, bit cleaner than you. <laughs> I have um, kind of followed along. He's posted different things on a story and like, and I was kind of, uh, I was kind of bummed because like when this released, I wasn't able to go, but luckily they still had some, not a lot, but oh. so, so this is French toast. Sticks in. I don't even know how to approach this. Oh. This syrup is amazing. <laughs> Bro. Oh, it's got little cinnamon clusters in it. Mm. Or something was a little crunchy. I don't know, dude. What'd you do to this? <laughs> well, I toasted it a little bit extra. I was, Lucy was like, you okay over there? I was like, I'm toasting this over and over. Like She was like, oh, our toaster sucks. <laughs> I was like, it's good. My toaster sucks too. I think uh, all toasters are on an equal playing field. I think huh. I think toasters are such a product of a bygone era that it doesn't matter what brand you buy. This pairing. Anyway. Toasters. Toasters. My little toaster. <sighs> the syrup. And the sticks, and then wash it down with the rye. Oh my god! This syrup, wow, dude, the syrup is ridiculous. Mm. Well done, well done, Wilderness Trail. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't think that's going to. This probably. This definitely won't hit stores. No, it's. I don't think it's ever coming back either. Ah. Uh, I'm just going to drink this syrup. <laughs> oh, that's so that's good. That's one way to do it. That's so good. Dogs are going nuts. You got a package? Um. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Usually. Wow. I'm sure Lucy's out there. I'm sure she'll. Yeah, she's chilling. Take care of it. Um, <sighs> do you want to move on to my pairing? 
Yeah, I'm ready. I'm wielding this trail all day right now. Oh, God, you got a box. Uh Oh, Oh, my. (laughs) Get the fuck out of here. He don't even have a chair. (laughs) Well, he's not he's not going to be here super long, but we have a special guest. Well, I forgot his guest. I forgot his bottle because he found out I was going. Oh, my God. (laughs) I was supposed to bring him his bottle and I didn't. Do you want to? We can't really. What's he doing here? Well, and you brought my bottle. I'm a nice guy. I forgot. I'll give you a pour of this right now, though. Anyway, Chad from My Daily Bourbon is here. (laughs) Dude, I didn't think this was supposed to happen today. What is going on right now? Come around, come around. Where is the French toast stick from? Uh, Ego in a toaster. (laughs) You want to get on on camera here, buddy? Sure, I can. What what are we going to do here? He's just going to hang out for a couple minutes. He had some stuff to drop off and a thing to pick up, too, and... I know, but he can't s- sit behind me like. I know. This. I'm trying to get us to move around so we can be. Do in we the want middle. to hook that thing up? Can we? I don't have the capacity for it right this second. Okay. So. So do we? You need- scooch. Just. You can do it, Serpent King. This is the worst <laughs> Pornhub search screen I've ever seen. <laughs> Holy crap! Surprise! Right. Surprise! Right, we have a that? we have a special guest. Do you have Do you have headphones? No. Here, I'll give you. I'll give you. Well, I can. I can hear you loud and clear. Ooh. We'll just share a microphone for a little bit. That'll work. There we go. Here's the maple finish. (laughs) This is uh, this is some configuration we've got going on here. So, do you do dip, dip, or? Well, we tried the maple syrup by itself. The the pour by itself. Just. Perry's. Thought this was BTAC level. It's really freaking good. It's pretty amazing, man. All right, I'm going to do a double dip here. Yeah, dude. I'm going to do a double dip. Crank right that up there. just a little bit so we can. Crank that soldier boy. Do it. Dip into that. <laughs> oh. I didn't get a fork for use. So I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a little underclass, but. <laughs> dude. It's freaking good. Take a drink of that and then drink that maple syrup. You You're guys. finishing finishing the maple syrup. No, I poured him some new one. No, oh. I mean no. Uh, never mind. Oh, right. Hmm, that is good. Doing the double dip again. Let me grab your bottle while I'm thinking about it too. Actually, I can't get out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of locked into this position. I oh, know. Me too. <laughs> yeah, you ain't going nowhere. That's good. Good job. I'm proud of you. I'm going to pat you on the leg. Good job, boy. <laughs> that, that wasn't my leg. <laughs> could, Jeez. Could we be any more patronizing? <laughs> I got one question for you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, want I know, you to just I know where this is going. Oh, hot God. or not? Um. And to get this particular image, you have to be on the Patreon. So yeah. patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Hot or not? Is that Perry as a woman? <laughs> Just answer the question. <laughs> I know what it is. Yeah, it's hot, right? You can say it. It's I've okay. already said it. It's okay it. if you do. No, I, I trust you. I don't do anime. Oh, sucks for you. Dude. Well, I do. Hot. That's what he's trying to say. Hot. He, what, he, what he means is he doesn't do hentai. There you go. Like you. Actually, you know who I thought it was? What's the difference if I'm doing hentai or if I'm doing real life? It doesn't matter. Okay? You you know who I thought it looked like? Who? Me? Mary Ann. Oh, shit. That was Perry Ann right there. (laughs) That's why I was confused for a second. I'm like, is that... It looks like Perry, but it looks like Mary Ann. No. (laughs) That's a conversation for for a different time. She ain't got nothing on that. That's the exclusive Patreon. That's like tier seven. (laughs) She ain't got nothing on that. I don't think we have that many... That's tears. A, that's the thousand dollar a month tier right there. <laughs> All right. Well, you've made it. You've interrupted our second sips and snacks. So Perry's pairing something for us now. Yeah. Okay. And there's a box in front of us from Futile Bakery. So 
Did you plan to show up right in front of this so you could eat the snacks? No. No. Whatever. Not. Oh, he just planned to be here around 1230, and sure enough. My, my original plan was to walk in and play the New Age Outlaws theme, oh but my, my hands were too full. I wish I'm you would have talk. played the Stone Cold theme. Perry wouldn't give me the glass. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, local bakery, we've we've done pairings Holy with their stuff before, futile. Holy crap, what in the hell? Lucy texted me the other day and said that they were doing homemade oatmeal cream. Oh. Nice. Where's futile? Over on, um, Wallace? I'm going to have to take a moment. Right now. <laughs> I keep, I'm nosing this like it's whiskey. But God, it smells good. Dude. Oh, True Top Bakery sponsor us right now, please. I'll do the sips and snacks with you every every week. Holy crap! We really do need to do Look some at this kind of like guy's big ass head right in the middle. <laughs> Get the light shining on my shiny forehead. <laughs> oh my god! Well, there's only one thing to do: the pour over. The pour over. All right, triple right here. Try and get it into frame. Whoa. No, oh, no. I spilled on my pants. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just going to let that soak in there for a minute. Boy. And you're doing the syrup? I am doing the syrup. You're not as dumb as you look. This episode is off the rails. Oh, my. I don't this know how weird intense. you want to get, but you want to dip it in the syrup? Pour it over. You do it. You want me to do everything for you? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you the syrup. It's my syrup. I brought it. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. These are freaking good. They're so good. Oh. Oh. All right, dude. The syrup. Another level. Oh, my God. Wow. David Levine's going to hate this episode. Yeah, this is content. <laughs> <laughs> Does he not like tips and snacks? Well, he doesn't like the sounds. Oh. The mouth noises. That's not me, David. That's... <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Well, Chad, it's good to have you for a little bit. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. No problem. I got a ton of stuff over. I got to leave. Yeah. So. Perry had quite the bill, it looks like. Your um, 2XO is over in that box over there, too. Right next to the, the litter robot. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm going to finish this, and then I'll get up. It's good and, it's good and finished. I mean. Too. You know, what have you been drinking? Yeah, what have you been drinking recently? What have you been drinking? A shit ton of... Uh... A shit ton. Explain. A shit ton. What's a shit ton? Well, it's less than a fuck ton. Okay. Makes sense. McFarland's cash strength, which I brought. I'm going to pour that for you before I leave. What is that? And my double oaked uh, Weller special. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Yeah. Let me get that. You oh. can't get up mm. right now. I can't. My leg is Just cramping. Just stay here. Let Perry get it. That's all right. This is wild. You're sitting down there real fast. Oh. I'm stepping on a sample bottle. That's wine. That's wine. There you go. This is the double oak? That is the... That you made? Yep. What barrel did you use? That is using the oak bottle. The oak bottle? Oak bottles. The oak bottle is a 750. It's wine style looking bottle. Looking at this... This is something I never thought would happen. <laughs> it's like alternate universe Perry. <laughs> now it's the two of us combined. <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Would you like to sit down? Then I will just awkwardly stand behind him. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Won't be the first time you've awkwardly st stood behind me. First time with her pants up. <sighs> Giving away all our secrets. 
Yeah, you don't actually You're breaking hate, kayfabe right now. You don't actually hate each other. You just I'm gonna turn my head around. All right. Oh. Boy, this episode is all kinds of crazy. <laughs> It's a very visual episode. <laughs> if you're listening sure. on on uh, a podcast app right now, like you may just want to switch over to YouTube. Whoa! That was just in that bottle? Two and a half days. So Two and a half days? There's a char three on the inside. I've used it about ten times already. So this is... Like what else have you used in it? Just other bourbons. My... Infinity bottle of crappy whiskey. And there's the nose I'm getting. Yeah. The crappy whiskey. Oh. And that was just... Two and a half days. Special reserve. Special reserve 90 proof. I poured it out of this bottle, into that bottle, back into this bottle. I like it. Double bottled. I like it a lot. Double bottled, double barrel. Hmm. I really, really dig that, man. This is not this is not a uh, a negative thing. I'm just saying like it took the sweeter wheat like notes that I usually get and turned them into like a dark like bakery note. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, this is cool. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it's good. Just Mm-mm. just be vulnerable. Mm-mm. Just just it's okay. Safe, safe space. Give yourself the chance to open up. That's the only way that you can grow as a human. I can grow all day long. What? Well, you all stop it. <laughs> this ain't no intervention. <laughs> I've seen this porn before. <laughs> <laughs> a bourbon podcaster and a bourbon influencer take advantage of double team. <laughs> take advantage of Random bourbon nude. <laughs> okay, this is pretty good. I really like this, man. Why well, not? I crushed like half the bottle in a weekend. That's a problem. It's good. I'm really excited to try this, though. What is that? It's the Total Wine America. Uh, proprietary brand, I suppose. Is that yeah, the right sure. word for it? Yeah. Um, we did bourbon from an undisclosed location, but I think we all can pretty much figure out where it is from. Um, I finish it up on your, uh, science experiment here. Uh, pecan wheel. Oh yeah. I yeah. see that. Pecan wheel. For sure. The only thing I wish it would have done was add some texture because it's still pretty thin. Yeah. It I get, thin. I get that. I don't but, think, but, but can it add texture though? Sure. Pulling the oils out of the wood. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Pulling wheels out of the wood? Oils. Oh, I was like, what? Crown, crown. Y'all, y'all. We clowning? <laughs> I don't know what kind of wheels y'all are putting in these wheels. <laughs> oh, snap. Why is... Uh, that smells like tobacco. Why is this barcode uh, got a... Uh, Sharpie on it. Is this some illegal shit right here? No, I can get a free bottle up to 60 bucks in spirits every month. Oh. Perks. 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 Eden's really show. happy about it too. Yeah. She's, she's thrilled. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add that to our com our conversation <laughs> later. Yeah. The perks of perks of being a retailer. That's, you know, I, I would call them I would call it privilege more than I would perks. Yeah, but it is it is a part of the it's conversation. Not Percocets. <laughs> Percocet. It's got to be Percocet. total wine brand only. Molly. So. Does it really? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Does you that can't, mean picks? You can't be like no picks, no picks, no picks. You, you just can't. total wine brand. <laughs> Yellow label. Okay, so do you have the power to suggest of like some crazy total wine label that's like? Will it or something like that? Mm. Oh, okay, never mind. We can't even get a will it pick. It's so dumb. Can we talk about the what's the the band that has the will it stuff right now? Kamichi, Kamichi, 
Yeah, who are they with? Kings of Leon? Kings of Leon, yeah. Why is that shit priced so, so high? Because it's Willet. No, I mean, I think it's priced even more than normal Willet. Probably because Kings of Leon has to get paid, too. <sighs> they sucks. got to license their name on the side of the bottle. They suck. They're not that bad. Oh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I like this? <clears throat> Be- Taste it. Because it's good? It smells <laughs> What do this you need? The, what do because you know? it's the thing we do. <laughs> what qualifiers do you need? Oh, why, do I, why do I like this? Oh, maybe Him. it's because... That, there, see? No. Their water look what, bottle. Look what he did. I don't know whose water bottle that was. That was mine. No. The black one? The black one. Yeah. Maybe. Did anything break? Nothing broke. I, I was trying to stick to the storyline right there. I like the nose better than the palate. I do too, but that palate is still something to be talked about. What's the price on this? 40 bucks. Oh. <laughs> okay, never mind. For a cast strength weeded bourbon? I was getting ready to go. It's probably, it's four years old, right? I was getting ready to go full on, like. Probably. Yeah. But it, do you think it tastes like. Yes. You do? Yes. I don't get that. I do. I don't get, I don't get that yeast. No, it, no, it, I didn't get that at all. It reminds me of the early batches of that brand. Mm-mm. I don't get any of that yeast no. at all. I think it is from Bibico. Mm. Uh maybe. I could I could definitely see that. There's a uh there's a note on the finish that's a little like it moves a little stale, like not not really in a bad way, but just like a weird way that I don't usually get on that. Mm. Okay. Um, you think like it's not a not as refined? Yes. Yeah, I could see that. But but for that here's price, the thing though. I'm not they, mad at that. I feel like they like they know their stuff really well. They wherever man, you're blocking my hand. But on all their weeded stuff, it's seriously like fresh bread. Yeah, oh. it's almost like yeah, it's almost like a uh, French toast. Like, yeah, but I don't get any of that on there. There's just something on the finish of this that makes me think it's something different. There's a lot of words on the back of this label. A lot of words. I mean, that's a... It's a it's a novel. A, that's a freaking... That's an Eminem song right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, this this is killer. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. No problem. Appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I'll leave your bottle. Do you want to take this one? Bottle. Like I know that we've took a little bit out of it. I can. That's fine. You take that, and I'll That'll just work. keep the other one. That's good. And then I'll I'll give you a little sample of that. You just bought one for him too. Yeah, he asked for it. Oh, okay. Well, I just didn't that's know. Macaulay. Oh. oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I felt I bad because he that. tried to he tried to do the the I'm friends with this person. <laughs> I'm gonna and I go <laughs> and I text him. I text him. I go. Did you ever get a response back? He's like, no. I was like, well, I'm going to go down there if you when you want to. Yeah. So he basically traded that other thing that I got yeah. for that. Gotcha. And a few extra dollars. It sounds like we're talking about drugs. We are. The way that we're talking. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the way the, that we're like sure, skirting man. around. But, the, well, I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's going, a stimulant. But going into the, our conversation that we're going to have, it's almost like that. Yeah. You got to know a guy. You got to have a guy. Yeah. You got to like have relationships with this person in order to get this and that and and it's almost like you can't say everything you want to say because you're either going to make that person mad or you're going to give your secret away or people don't want people to know yeah it's crazy yeah bourbon is drugs right now no and we will definitely address that too a little bit later in the episode but chad where can people find you on social media uh, at My Daily Bourbon everywhere. That's here, it. Get down here. Get on this mic. At My Daily Bourbon Lord. everywhere. 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 Look at those waveforms. Everywhere. Uh, go follow Chad. Twitter. It's awesome. No Twitter. Not everywhere. Not Facebook. So, so not Facebook. So not everywhere. Everywhere that I'm at. Just search My Daily Bourbon. You, you know. Google, Yahoo, Bing. I love when I don't have to do anything to win. <laughs> just playing. Google Hangout. I'm just playing. <laughs> you got AOL? 
I, I do. I, yeah, AIM. <laughs> oh, Yahoo Messenger? No. ICQ. Yes. My Daily Bourbon on ICQ. ASL. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what? Whoa. ASL or ICQ? Both. <laughs> Let's go, Eric. In 10 minutes. And he's gone. About time. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a little too close. What a We're being too nice to each other. What a strange episode this has been. <laughs> wow. I don't know where we're at right now. We haven't even gotten into the the crux of it, I would say. Uh, what have you been drinking recently, Eric? Uh, not much, honestly. Yeah. Um, I had... Oh, my God. I'm cracking up now because the the last like big thing I had was an old-fashioned I made the other day. And you know what I made it With other, Wilderness Trail. Wilderness Trail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sponsor us. Um. No, like no joke. Like I made, uh, I had to work a couple of nights the last couple of nights in a row. But before that, I made an old fashioned, just a normal bitters, orange pill, simple syrup, uh, ice cube, and I used a uh, pick of Wilderness Trail Rye. It's about one ten proof. Oh, it was so good. Like the the spice and the orange together was just nice. Loved it. Real nice. Real nice. So, but yeah. Oh, you mentioned that oh, that maple syrup in an old-fashioned. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to save the rest of my syrup then. I so got I can... more. I'll give you some. You want a little bit more? I can That's save. plenty, dude. Okay. Just making sure. What are you venturing? Well, um, last night on my stream, for anybody who hasn't seen it, I... Went through a bunch of Oak and Thieves picks. Whole box of them. That they sent me. And it was a fun experience, I will say, for sure. Maybe they should sponsor us, too. Oak and Thieves, sponsor us. <laughs> um, truly not a whole lot out of the ordinary. Um, we got a sample in the mail the, well, the, we got the Parker's Heritage in the mail. Um, and I know you can see that there's a little bit of it that's gone. I see that. A little, little, little nip. I did not drink it. Whose was that? I will tell you about it in a minute. <laughs> Surprises all day. <laughs> well. Give a little sample to somebody? Yes. Okay. But I'll, I'll talk about that because it, it kind of ties into the conversation that we're going to have. Pain is pain. Uh, as well. Yes, Pete is now stealing pours from me. Hey, let me back, so I'll come to heaven hell. Really, Pete? Don't do that. Get it together, man. Don't do that. Get it together. So, so like I said, this is a conversation that we have kind of been percolating on for a couple of weeks. And I, I think it's a not an indictment, but at the very least, an examination of what it means to be a bourbon drinker yeah. right now. Or at the very least, a bourbon consumer. Because um, there are, surprisingly, and this was news to me recently. Um, Hold on. Quick cut. Sorry, I got a phone call. Um But it, it all stemmed from this story that Chad made, Chad, that you just saw, that I clapped into non-existence, um, <laughs> <We can clap. laughs> about people who come into a, a retail store, a liquor store, on holidays and say things like, I got up early and left my family at home for this. And that and, was an actual quote, apparently. And, yeah, and and that kind of sparked like I a little bit of a debate between us mm-hmm. as to who was more right in that situation. Um and and kind of like who was who was to blame. And I don't think that we're like I don't think this is going to be as much of a debate as it is a conversation. No, no, no. I don't think we're debating. 
I know. think uh, from that, I may have come come off a little strong on that, only because, uh, like, I don't, and I still feel like this, like, because I am someone who does the same. But if you if you have a job that you have to work on a holiday, if you're making the holiday part of the conversation, then I I I tend to not feel bad because it's a job that you took knowing you may have to work on a holiday. Just like I have a job that I may have to work on a holiday. I chose to do that. Um, putting that aside, I don't think anybody should be rude to anybody and say anything like that. But I was just trying to take the holiday, having to work on the holiday out of it. Like, I don't think this is a conversation that can be used for any day of the week. Like the yeah. y- using, using I'm working on the holiday and this person is saying this to me on a holiday is not really what I want to focus on because that's just a job you chose to sign in on and you have to work on a holiday. That's that's fair. I yeah. do I do want to make sure though that that aspect of it is included. No, no, that's perfectly fine. I'm just saying like <laughs> I don't want anybody to think like I'm just an asshole that's saying like no, oh, no, people for sure. have to work. But for sure. As somebody who has to work on holidays, like I have to work all of New Year's this year. Like I, I have to take my turn working holidays and I know that like I, I don't think anybody who works on holidays should use that as, as an excuse to like think that people they're helping, people they're serving, people that's doing that is is they're exempt from getting any rudeness yeah. just because it's a holiday. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. So I put out the prompt on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I said, "Do you consider yourself a bourbon hunter? What are your highs, lows, and insights?" into the state of retailer and consumer relations. We had some really good responses from this as well. I'm going to start out uh, with Don Nishida. I consider myself more a bourbon gatherer versus hunter. Mm. My philosophy is if a bottle is at a location while I am there, I will gather it into my collection. I will no longer go out of my way or wait hours unless I am traveling out of state. I think that's a really good place for us to kind of start off because I, I think about... And part of this is uh, COVID and pandemic related, right? Just the state of and and the the mindset of releases. Yeah, I haven't stood in a line for bourbon in at least three years. Not think, at all through twenty twenty. Not at all no. through twenty one. Not at all this year. I, I honestly think when I and when I say standing in line, I'm thinking like hours before the release. Like, yeah, I, mm-hmm. that when Four Roses did that 20 year release, I stood in line. But like I was in the building just like I was only waiting for them to scan bottles and stuff. I was not there before. So, yeah, I don't I don't remember the last it was before COVID. Uh, it was probably some release. I don't remember, but it's been years it's been, since I've actually got up before the store opens, stood in line in anticipation of getting a bottle. Um, I, I'm kind of divided on it. I don't, and I think people will agree. Like I don't, I, I don't like hate that. And I think people do this. And this is one thing I was going to uh, say, like, if you're somebody that kind of has decided like, Hey, this is my brand. This is my Mm. go-to. Like if you just up and said, you know, I'm going to buy bourbon, but like, I'm really going to go for like all the Elijah Craig picks or something like that. We have a friend that was this morning was, he got up and he got in line at four roses. I think you can name him. Yeah. Steve, uh, Beerman's bourbon. Yep. Um, but I know, and I look at that, and I'm not like, oh, my God, Steve is getting up, and he's... I admire you know, the dedication. Yeah, but <laughs> his his thing, he is a Four Roses guy. And, like, I think if you know the person is, like, that person, like, if Perry was like, I'm getting in line for this 20-year-old Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, because he collects all the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, or hunts, or gathers, I guess you would say. I don't see anything wrong with that. Like, that's your thing. You should, it's fine. I think when you mix the people who 
could care less, and they are genuinely just getting in every line possible because they're just trying to get that, and they don't care. That's that's kind of when waiting in line to me kind of gets a little bit like, come on, like you don't even you know you don't like this, or you're just trying to flip it, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um. I'm. I'm also of. I want to talk about the the flipping aspect of this in a couple moments, but. I am also of two minds about it, but for a different reason. Okay. One, I'm at a place where I'm like, I'm okay with just getting my standard drinkers. Yeah. And I'm also okay with getting really good picks. Yeah. Right? I don't miss that standing in line without knowing what it is that you are going to find on the other side. I, I think uh, I think that's the biggest waste of time as a bourbon hunter. Well, I, I think in a way that's what I was trying to say. Like it's like when you know what you're in line for to get because that's your thing. Like you you go for it. Like get it. If you're just thinking like eh, I'm going to get something and I you know whatever it is I'll I'll it's special I can take a picture of it I can flip it or whatever. Like come on. Like the last time that I did that. <laughs> It was on like a random Saturday at Total Wine. It, it might have actually been a Friday. Now that I think about yeah. it. And, you know, like there, at that point, it was like 2019 and there's still a little bit of like greenness about it all. And I was like, oh, maybe they're going to have like, you know, they had some leftover BTEC. But did you have fun? No, I had no fun. I okay. was on my own. Okay, and I, think, I, I, I get think in. When, I think when you get there and you're with friends or something, it's a it's almost like an event. Well, I, I, I'm I'm going to come back to that point okay. in a second. Okay. Um, but I <laughs> I went in and like the one really special thing that they had was Henry McKenna single barrel for like sixty dollars. I was pissed yeah i was so mad yeah, yeah. and that is a mindset too that i i don't like being in did you have, i don't like adopting that that i i deserve to have my my time rewarded right. out of an expectation of virtually nothing did you have a hint or like something saying like they may have something else no in? okay so no you, you it, it was it was like it. Well, it was like, Knox, can I help you? It was like somebody posted on a local Facebook group that, oh. There's a drop today. There's a, yeah, or, or something's going to come out uh, this Friday at, at Total, or like rumors well, have it. That, right. And so, so I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll go over there and I'll, I'll wait in line. And um, I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't know anybody <laughs> in the line. Um and I, I walked away with a sixty dollar bottle of Henry McKenna. How did you re how did you barrel. react when you were uh paying and walking out? Were you just like paid and you just got out? No, I was um I mean I didn't treat anybody any differently than I would have on a normal right day at retail. Yeah. Um because it's not their fault. No, no, no. You know? But I think you know, I think what this whole thing started was I think people act like it's everybody who works there's fault so. yeah no absolutely you're bummed you're like whatever and you got out right yeah and and there's so many different layers to this particular conversation and the the other side of my my two-mindedness uh, is that i miss those events where we got in line i don't miss the exhaustion from it but getting in line at like 2 a.m with Chad and Sarah, you knew what they were. They had that, yeah, because it was an antique collection release, right? You knew what they had, exactly. Yeah. And and we we hung out and we recorded a podcast in line. That's awesome. At three a.m. and <laughs> none of us walked away with anything. Yeah, but you it was knew. a huge bummer. That's but that's I think that's the difference is. You knew what you were trying to get. Yeah. As opposed to kind of like I said the last time was 
this store has been known to put out things. I'm going to take a chance on this. And then if you if you get in line and you take a chance on your own and they don't have it, that's just a chance. That's like taking a gamble. That that's You don't take that out on the worker or the person yeah. at the register or stuff like that. Like You took a chance because you just assumed they would have something. So what is your opinion with that in mind on... On random drops. Just random like you see it on. Just like, so, and and I will, I will use this as an example as well. Wednesday night, uh, I had to pick up some medicine for Eden. She's got a double ear infection. And at the Walgreens, where I picked it up, there is a liquor barn that's right next door. Yeah. I was like, I'll go in. I'll see see what's up. This was 6.15 in the evening. And they were putting out their allocated Buffalo Trace picks when I was there. What possesses them on a random Wednesday at 6... I mean, what, like three hours before they close? To put to put those bottles out. Uh, social media. I think... Um... I think it's gotten to the point where the retailer knows that there's always somebody popping in. There's they're taking That's the chance fair. on That's fair. knowing this one person who is in a group is going to post it, then that person's going to see it and post it, and that person. And I think they, I think the retailers have caught up to the groups. Does like. I don't know, like part of me doesn't like it because I get mad when I like, I want to be able to plan. Like if there's a real, it was a bottle yes. I really want. I want to be able to say like, Hey, I'm going to go stand in line for this. I know what I'm going to get. And I'm doing that as opposed to, Oh my God, I got to like, I got to go into this store like every couple hours just to take a chance on maybe getting something. Yeah. So I I think I think the the groups have kind of um um influence the retailers now to where sure. they're they're oh, like yeah, of course some they're going to post it somebody's going to get it we're going to sell it I mean we'll yeah. put it out whenever Did you get it Isn't anything? Yes What'd you get <sighs> Get OWA pick no, full proof pick. Taylor Taylor single barrel. Damn. I turned around and I sold it. That's fine. And that's why there's an ounce of the Parker's Heritage gone. Okay. Because it was a it was you know and and like I extend the wealth. Yeah. If I can. And the the guy that I sold it to, I've known for a while. We've traded bottles back and forth before. And just as a thank you, and like, you know, he's not in the podcast game. He's not in the influencer game or anything. So my thought was he probably is not going to get to try this. Right. So I gave him the opportunity to try it. That's, I, I, I respect that more than just posting it up on the internet yeah and like here buy this yeah um well no i'm i'm specifically talking about the parkers like the the ounce that i gave him was like bonus oh either way like you're still you know giving somebody a chance yeah so that that brings into the conversation the secondary market of it all which reminds me of uh replying to my prompt from coming whiskey Okay. So then I'm just struggling with the inflated costs. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about that before we started recording. Yeah. I that will, everything's getting so daggum expensive right now. I will. Uh, this morning I got off work and as I do, I go to Ernie's and grab a water or energy drink. I've cut back on the energy drink. If you've listen last week you know i'm trying to do better but so i grabbed a water and a diet coke i was like i know i'm gonna be recording and they were like we got this in this morning 
do you want it? Which was nice of them to ask, but it was the, uh, what we talked about earlier, the, um, the Kings of Leon bottle. It was a five year will it. As you know, if you've been listening, if you've just started, I'm a will it fan. Like, yeah, I get it. The prices are high, but this is a, a label that just says will it on it. Like or from will it. It was a five year and it was $175. And even, even the guy, even the guy that I talked to was like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I would do that. I was like, no, I was like, and I said, you are going to sell this. Like people are going to buy this and it's yeah. going to be fine. I'm just not going to do it. I can't even justify well, that. Well, see that that's the thing is that <laughs> in a funny way, we as bourbon consumers have kind of played ourselves. Yeah. Inadvertently. And whether we intend to or not, I would say 99% of the time we do not intend it unless you're part of the, the skeevy 1% that wants to drive. Not, not in not 1% in the, you know, that kind of umbrella term that gets yeah, used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that, that, you know, maybe 1% of those people who are like intentionally going and buying bottles and reselling them to drive up the demand for those bottles. Right. That has happened. We have seen that happen again and again on secondary. So when that kind of action is taking place, we see these inflated prices on secondary which is a different conversation altogether, I would say. Um, although they they are related. Um, we we have to expect the fact that prices are going to increase. Yeah, that they're I mean, going to rise at stores because you get into a retail space, you get into a a retail business. With the intention of making money. Yeah. You're not doing it as a, a charity, necessarily. You are driven by the economy. You are driven by capitalism. You are driven by the dollar. Well, that's why we see when people post stuff, well, I know this is retail, but my store sold it for this. And then another person's going to be like, well, I got it for this. And it's like, they the store pays for what they pay for, and yeah. then they can charge whatever they want to for it. And... Just That's like not it. to say that we agree with this practice. No, no, no. It's just the state of it. And I it's think, the, the way that things are. I think it comes back to us. So like it comes back to You think we're at fault? I think I think the people, not us, like Oh, I was gonna me. say not me and as, you. As as bourbon influencers, as podcasters. Well, you know. I think I think part of it is. I think just the the person buying it has shown people. Or shown retailers, shown stores that they're willing to pay this. Yeah. They're willing to stand in line for this. No, no, absolutely. So what's the <clears throat> smartest thing to do? Raise it up a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, we're just as much to blame, I think, as the retailers. Now, when you when you get a bottle of Blanton's and you charge $200 for it, like, you're just a jerk. <laughs> I mean, that's just crazy. But when it creeps up a little bit, five, ten dollars, twenty dollars here and there, I think they, you know, everybody's just learning that the bottle's going to get sold. People want it. People are going to wait for it. So, you know, if that's the only place they can get it, then all right, let's mark it up. A little and bit. this kind of like it, it even goes above the retailers too, yeah. right? I think the most glaring. Example of this, not to keep harping on them, but if you'd look at a distillery that has maximized their ability to encourage people to buy into the hype, Buffalo Trace is at fault. Yeah. They Um, are. You. I had a tour group a couple months ago who... Where I had we had this whole schedule lined out for them. The beginning of the day was going to be that they were going to go to Buffalo Trace. They were going to stand in line for a little bit, go through the gift shop, buy whatever they could find, and then we were off to the next stop. 
That cinnamon roll is really good. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Something that should have taken them 20 to 30 minutes took them an hour and a half. Oh, boy. We had to completely change the schedule for the day. Or what? But Blanton's or E.H. Taylor or something like that? I don't even remember. I mean, tru- truly, I have no idea what it actually was. Um, and this was reflected by yet another respondent. Uh, Ratchet Rumak. Ooh. Rumak. Damn. Um, like new god. friend. Like She's a, wonderful. A god. Rumak. She said, so my parents went to Buffalo Trace and said it was insane and that people were acting like it was Black Friday. I mean, yeah, I see pictures all the That's time. That's how like it that. goes. I mean, that is how it goes at Buffalo Trace right now. And I, I, I just hate that because... It used to be such a fun place to go and visit and you could walk up and they had tours available and you could just go and sample bourbon and you might see Freddie roaming around. But his time is now allocated and your time to even get into the gift shop is allocated and it becomes a chore and it's not it's not enjoyable. It's not the relaxing spirit, pun unintended. That bourbon is supposed to be. Yeah. The engagement with the culture, the engagement with being a part of that community is so lost when all of this becomes a chore. And I think that's what upsets me the most about all of this is that there are these expectations that have been set because consumers have gone to stores, they have gone to distilleries, gone wherever, and they have had something special. They just happen to get something special off the truck. Yeah. Right? And so their expectations then turn into, well, I have supported you. I have been here through thick and thin. Look at what I did. I still came into the shop weekly during the pandemic, even though, you know, this, that, and the other. I deserve to get something special. Right. Yeah. You know, and and that's exactly what I meant when I said the la- when we started this was the people are like, "Oh, I was here 2 years ago when it, and like so here I am again and I can't believe you didn't have anything." But like- but you agree with me <clears throat> that in that particular instance that's not the store's fault. No, 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 no. That the, that solely relies upon that's the person expecting the, and the customer. assuming they're going yeah. to do it, and they and yeah, the store started that before, but there was never an advertisement or a post saying, "Hey, we're going to have." No, you got lucky. You got lucky. We did that then. That doesn't mean we're doing it now. So yeah, the store did it before, but at the same time, if you're taking a chance. And you don't have confirmation that they're going to have what you want. That's your gamble. Yeah. And if they don't have it, then you need to just walk out and be done. I I mean, you don't have to do the drive by, say something so somebody hears you and walk away. And like, that's unnecessary. Yeah. Like, come on. Um. So, yeah, like if the store's done it before, yeah, there's a chance you're going to think there's people going to think you're going to do it again. But if those people buying it don't have actual confirmation that that bottle is there, then there's no one to blame. Like you just gambled. Like if I buy a lottery ticket cause it's a billion dollars and I don't win, I can't go back into the gas station and be like, what Give me the another. hell? What the hell? Like I didn't yeah. win. Like this is your fault. Like, no, like it's a gamble. Yeah. It's a freaking gamble. Uh, let's take a break from reading. Some replies. Got some voicemail. Let's listen to it. All right. I like this. What's going on, bourbon nerds? You asked a question what we think of about the bourbon retail world right now. I think it sucks, to be honest with you. It's just not fun for me anymore. When I started collecting whiskey in 2015, even all the way through like 2017, 18, when I first started talking to all you guys on the podcast, um, you used to be able to go out every week and find stuff. And it was fun hunting. Nowadays, it's just like, even if I go to work, lunch at work at 12 o'clock, there's 
five hundred thousand people in line at a liquor store. Like it's just it's just not fun. It's just you can't get nothing. It's honestly easier to find friends and find groups that are also bourbon nerds and get what you need to get. Just text people, get in your groups, get in contact with people. It's just easier to do that than it is hunting. That's that's my two cents. So y'all have a good one. Amen, Ian. Amen. That was from Ian McMaster. Yeah. Our good buddy. Um <laughs> That's another thing, too, is that you get burnt out. Oh, yeah. You get burnt out. You get burnt out so quickly. It sucks when you don't get something, and when you frequently don't get something. Like, it sucks. Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I just think that goes back to what we said earlier. I just think more people are aware of bourbon. Yeah. Um, More retailers are aware of it. Um, and it's just, it's just how it's evolved. Um, I think Ian though, I think Ian has kind of done what knowing Ian, we're friends, we talk, um, has kind of done what I said earlier. I think if, if new riff, which is Ian's brand, that's his favorite brand. If they, we're going. If he got a hint or uh, an announcement that they were going to put out this special new riff, something, I think he would get in line, and he would wait for it. But that's because I think he he has kind of decided that's his thing. Like he's yeah. not taking a chance on every liquor store he passes by. Of uh, I'm going to get in line just because I think I'm going to get something. I think he's chose to figure out what bottles he would rather get in line for, and yeah. that's what he goes for. But yeah, it, it's not fun continuously not getting anything and seeing the same people who you know or you I think this is another thing. I think I think sometimes we assume the people we see that we don't know for sure that are flipping it or something don't appreciate it like we do. Like unless you have confirmation that that person is a flipper or they don't open their bottles, they just collect like who knows? They may like it just as much as you do, and yep. they just got up a little earlier than you. Um, well, it that that plays into this notion of we we need to temper our expectations and our assumptions, not just about stores, but also about people. other people. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, they they not to like get at the core of. <laughs> <laughs> where the human race needs to improve but i mean there there is a a level of uh self absorption and there there's another word i'm trying to think of that i i, I can't can't bring to mind um but but just i mean being feel like you owed some you are owed something excuse right, me right um yeah and like- and, and that that also extends to to wrap up this point that also extends to almost this this feeling of fomo yeah right fomo or that's envy. a big thing that's a that's a yeah. big a big word but right but there. envy looking at somebody else and they got a bottle and you're going oh well they're not going to enjoy it the way that I would well that's not true yeah you don't do you know, know that yeah. there's no way for you to possibly know yeah. that it's just being being a bourbon consumer right now is so messy. <laughs> it's messy. Yeah. You know, I, I, you, I you, there is no clear cut, even keeled way to come into this situation and go, I'm happy with the way that things are. Yeah. I think it's just, I think going back to like, we're in our own heads. Like, I think sometimes we think that bourbon and whiskey is such a niche thing that like, there's no nobody else around that feels like th- this passionate about it than I do. Yeah. When in reality, there's there's people who aren't that nerdy about it who know the brands. They know yeah. that, and they, th- you know, hey, I want to get a good bottle to have. Like, <laughs> they may not post about it or pair it or review it. That doesn't give them any reason not to have it more than you do. You know what I mean? Like, I think. I think we just get in our heads like, hey, this is our little thing. This is our thing. Like, don't don't let the news out that this is a great bottle because I want to get it. Like, I'm sorry. Like, just because I'm a 
huge fan of this single barrel doesn't give me any more of a right than the person who said, you know what? Like, I want a bottle of that. Like, I'll, I'd like to have that in my collection. Like, you know, I mean, that's yeah. just how it is. Like, we don't have a right to anything. Well, I think at this point, it's important for us to step back a little bit. I feel like another Stop. guest is about to just walk no, in. No, at this Stop. point, we're going to introduce the next yeah, person. Here's here. Fred Minnick. <laughs> I think we need to stop being critical of other people for a moment and be critical of ourselves. I'm not going to disagree. I I 100% agree. Because we do, in, in some regard, fall under the category of being bourbon influencers. Yeah. (laughs) I don't like using that phrase. No, I really, really don't. But there is an aspect of what we do that, encourages or influences people to buy particular bottles, hunt particular brands, be excited about something new. Case in point, when I named Four Rows of Small Batch Select my bourbon of the year in 2019. And I went and got it. This guy went and got it. I did. Before he was ever on the podcast. I did. Um, Now it's gone. (laughs) My bottle. It's gone. I was going to say, no, it's dr- like, dr- we just I, had some last no, week. No, I drank it. <laughs> so. <sighs> I mean, I, like, okay, like turning it around now that I'm on a podcast. There are people that I'm a little closer with at work and things that know I'm on a podcast. And they listen to the podcast or they now see my uh, Instagram. And so there are people that I know enjoy to have a bourbon every once in a while, but they are now texting me saying hey i'm gonna i'm gonna go to buffalo trace to try to get this eh taylor or something like that like i did that like i'm not gonna like that's not me trying to be like oh i'm this and that like no i influenced that person to go get it and now they are one of the people who are in line probably in front of somebody who's mad because oh this is my brand this is my bottle but this person's never had a bottle of eh taylor so you know what they got in line and went to Buffalo Trace to get it. Like, so yeah, I'm just as much to blame for that person waiting in line as anybody else. I don't, <laughs> it, it helps me to sleep at night to not think about that too much, <laughs> you know? And I'm not, I'm not saying that like, you I'm, wake up from I'm a trying, nightmare I'm and it's in just a somebody cold, mad in a cold at you. Sweat. You yeah. did this. I didn't get this bottle because of you. There was some regular person who isn't a, a bourbon, normie. a normie, <laughs> who got that bottle because he said he listened to this. As, no, like, no, it's, it, it, I, I use that jokingly, but like, it is what it is, though. The way the way that I view it, and this may not be the way that everybody else does it, and I do realize that we are going to review an allocated product yeah, here in a moment, but. When we do reviews of big bottles, of in, of allocated releases, to me, that's more of us letting people know whether or not they should, and I think I'm probably just digging my own grave with this, um, whether they should, whether or not they should be excited about it. Well, I or think, want to hunt yeah. for it, and not not in a way that like we're trying to. We're to, not trying to sell the bottle. Yeah, and we're not we're not trying to like build competition either. No, around you know the the bourbon market. I I I, I treat it more as like this is our contribution to the conversation on products that you should be looking for. Yeah. If this is a bottle that you see it. And we didn't give it a great review, and you're between that and a bottle of rare breed. You know, uh, take your own chances with it. But you know, I I, I would imagine that you know <laughs> you want to take the the safer option and go with the thing yeah. that you already know you love. Well, I well we always say like none of these brands are paying us to no. review this. We have literally never been paid. 
by a brand no. to do a review. We have been sent samples for free. Yeah. We have never taken money to review anything. And and but I think that it kind of goes back to something I said about another brand, blah, blah, blah. We are I feel like we're the guys who people feel that they're their friends having a poor. And I would rather somebody I'm close to, somebody that I'm familiar with, say, hey, this is good. Like, maybe it's not worth this money, but it's pretty good, like, to get it. Like, <laughs> it's not me, like, every bottle saying, like, you got to get this, you got to get this, you got to get this. Well, take take the direct relationship out of the equation and look at it from a standpoint of, I have never communicated with this person. I don't, I've, they've never responded to a DM or a tweet or anything, but I still respect and align with their palate. Yeah. That I think is in some ways what I am more focused on, you know, like I'm not, I'm not, doing this for our friends who listen to the show maybe this isn't this isn't the right way that i want to phrase no, no, this no 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 i see what I, you're saying like, I, and you're I'm not just, doing it for the people that we we are basically in the same group chats with yeah but there are plenty plenty of listeners who have followed the show who are fans of the show who I've never talked never to talked before to, yeah. but you're like they probably bought a bottle that you said was good and they're like oh like we kind of agree so like yeah, it's it's nice to get samples. It's amazing. I've got to try so many things like um, that I've never would have been able to get or fi- find or anything like that. But there are people who want to take the chance on getting in line. They want to get up early and drive to the distillery to do this. And it's nice when you can listen to somebody who says, you know, Take a chance. It's good. It may not be the best. Or, hey, this is the one I would wait in line for. Or, yeah. you know, I wouldn't worry about this. Like That being know. said, I, I I can't do I can't do lines anymore. <laughs> I don't have the energy for it. I'm so what what, what is I'm so tired. Okay. <laughs> let's let's get a little fun here. Let's get a little fun. Sure. Yeah, let's, sure. Hypothetically, you get a you get an email. Or a message that says, this is going to be dropped at this time. Probably need to get in line a couple hours before you, if you get in line three hours before you're guaranteed to get the bottle, what bottle you can make this up. Like you can, you can give this your fantasy bottle. This is your fantasy bottle. What makes you go, Lucy tomorrow? I'm sorry. Like I don't wait in lines ever, but I've got to get up and do this. Like I have to have this bottle. What is something that you would get that notification to be? Like? I I hate to be this way about it. I hate to be like poetic and and to like romanticize the the notion of it. But something like the last single barrel that Jimmy Russell ever made, yeah, or the last one that he ever approved of or tasted or what, like. Something of that caliber, right? I mean, yeah, that's you know, a great like it, it's and and it's not even like a, not not as a. I don't Jimmy know. Russell picked this Elijah Craig barrel proof. <laughs> <laughs> we uncovered Booker knows, but I mean, like this this is all you know hypotheticals yeah, and stuff that would fun. absolutely. It's for fun. It's just a fun. Yeah, like, if I mean, you're like, listening, what think of that? What whether you wait in line or you don't, what's that one bottle that you would take? your full day out, like plan ahead that you would wait in line for. I would love to know as well. Send us a message at my bourbon yeah, pod, leave a at whiskey mutant, comment, leave, us a mo- leave us a voicemail, eight, five, nine, four, two, eight, eight, two, five, three. I would love to hear why everybody's like grandiose. Like they're the bottle. Like just thinking of it right now, like, I mean, obviously wild Turkey comes to mind, but some to me, some will it that like, like we, you know, this is this. It's been in the corner of Will It for this long. That's the other thing. It's like, oh, we just stumbled upon this right. this barrel. But it, at the same time, too, it's like, how much of that is true? How yeah, much of yeah, it are yeah. you 
making up for hype? Am I really going to buy into this? Right. Or you Jimmy know? Russell pick this Willet barrel? <laughs> like, you imagine something like that? I love the thought, like, that you're only, it's just Jimmy Russell going and picking <laughs> single barrels at other distilleries. That's the only the thing. The Jimmy that Russell could... collection, he picks a barrel from every distillery that we like, Knob Creek yeah. or something like that. What my, is that? my work phone is ringing. I'm oh, sorry. I was like, is somebody calling in right now? No, I forgot. I forgot to mute my computer before oh. we <laughs> started recording. Who's listening right now? Um, yeah, we got a live barrel rings. But or, or something just like, you know, uh, there's a, a Stitzel Weller that somebody found or like they've been holding. And that would be something I would always like. Or, you know, an old turkey bottle that's like this is a... 25 year old wild turkey that has been you know we've been looking at for a long time like yeah i think that would be you know you pick you know what you really like sure and if yeah, you of course. if you don't wait in lines and you hate lines like perry said but if there's something that comes out that's like once in a lifetime like there is nothing wrong with getting up early and waiting in line we found a barrel proof eh taylor distilled Oh my god! A <laughs> product. It's eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, you know, I know, I know. It's with it. It's a within reason I think conversation. Bro, for eighty five dollars, they they they're like, this is a twenty five year old Elijah Craig barrel proof. Two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> See, but that's fun. It's fun I'd to think it. of. Like, I, just if you're listening. And you're and you 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 just like getting in line because you you're just going for anything like you know like you're taking a chance. Don't be a jerk if you don't get something you want. Yeah. And you know what? If you get up there, this is another thing. If you maybe listen to somebody behind you that's like, man, I've been dying for this and all, and you get up there and you see and you don't know what you're getting and you're like well i'm just gonna grab this because that guy behind me said he liked it i don't really care like you know what do something good that day and be like hey you can you can get this yeah yeah that's i don't know and also i i I think this is what mostly sparked the idea in my brain was the thought of consumers going up to cash registers oh yeah after a quote unquote disappointing drop, they complain into them. What? They've yeah. got nothing to do with it. The cash register. It's the store- not their fault. The cashiers are not oh. at fault. The store itself, maybe they've done it before. Maybe they've hopped something up. Maybe whatever. But I guarantee that person ringing you up has nothing to do with the bourbon allocation. If they do, good for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but at the same you, time, you're like. You're really busy and you drag Chad out and he has to ring you up, which. I've, I've been there before I've when that there. happens. <laughs> but it always yeah, makes me laugh but a little bit. Normally, that person, there's no need to look at that person and say, I can't believe I, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, that person is, they chose to work that day. Yes. That's just how it is. They but didn't choose for you to come in. They didn't choose to be, be part of pill. the bourbon allocation. Yeah, exactly. So they probably don't give a crap about you, honestly. <laughs> just another bottle of bourbon to them. Like, they don't know. Yeah, y'all didn't do anything. To they make them th- could not care less about you. <laughs> They're just making their money that day. <laughs> uh, I want to read through a few other responses yeah, just as we it. kind of wrap this up before we get to the review. Uh, hopping over to Facebook for a second. Darren Wright. Another week, another new brand sourcing MGP bourbon appears. The market is flooded with this crap and it gets people's attention. Between those and the never-ending chase for the LE stuff has made me weary. I find myself reacting, uh, or reaching rather, for available Kentucky bourbon, like regular Knob Creek, Elijah Craig, Russell's 10, etc. And then Kirk Hudson says, I used to make time when working out of town. I once found the last two bottles of a Four Roses single barrel in a Mm. small city. Anymore, it's exhausting. And not worth the time. You have to know somebody just to get anything remotely special. I now enjoy the occasional store pick and keep it standard and happier for it. Excuse me. And then PDM1902 over on Instagram. I hunt, but I'm not looking for allocated. If I find it, great. 
Give me a unique or hard to find store pick over anything at secondary. Every time I hit the road for work, I stop by a couple stores. Always thrilled when I find a Russell's or Four Roses pick sitting on the shelf, Heck especially yeah. if there is a no buy limit. Yeah, I think that, you know, that obviously they like Russell's and Four Roses. I think that's you not necessarily like you say, you are hunting, but you're not like hunting for everything. Like, yeah. I think that's a big thing. It's like, don't be, don't just grab everything just because you feel like you got to have everything. Yeah. Be a hunter, <laughs> but hunt for Russell's hunt for Elijah Craig barrel proof, like hunt for that specific thing. Like that's your thing. Um, but yeah, like I said, it is exhausting. Yeah, it is. Um, Darren, I'm uh, tired thinking about it. <laughs> Darren, there are a lot of MGP stuff. I mean, I, I, Literally just got a bottle of MGP just here. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. Like, once again, you're taking a chance. You're going to hunt for that bottle of MGP? Maybe somebody comes out and says it's the best MGP they've had in 20 years. Maybe it tastes like crap. Yeah. You just took the gamble. You're gambling, and that's just your choice. So, Let me make sure I haven't missed anything. We're all to blame. Everybody's to blame. Um, you just got to decide how you're going to handle it. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, that's Elon it. Said something to you. you can buy a check mark. I can. Yeah. Multicolored. Guess right? who's not going to do that? This guy. Anyway, uh, keep the conversation going if you would like yeah. to. Hashtag my bourbon pod or add us. On social media, yeah, I want to know what, what your, you guys think. What your, I'm I'm waiting in line for 24 hours or whatever. I want to know what that bottle is. A 24, a 20 year old George T. Stag, which actually, I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, go follow you would hate it. early tips and bits. Go follow you would hate it. Early hot take. Inst- you would hate it. Should have moved on. That's all I'm saying. You can see who beat them out. That's all I'm saying. Ugh. On the uh, bourbon finance bracket. Um, that, that's gold. <laughs> Sweet mashed potatoes. It's just good stuff, man. It's good stuff across the board. Okay. Well, I think this is going to be our last big review of the year. Speaking of allocations. Have you started formulating your list? Mm-hmm. How close are you to it being final? I've got it narrowed down to probably about 15 that I'm trying. <laughs> My to list is huge right now, man. Well, it started out a lot more, but I ever a little bit like when I'm not doing anything, I'll be like, I need to look at my list and think yeah. about. And I mean, maybe a sips and snacks just change, change it a little bit. Let's see what this does. Parker's Heritage, Do you 16th know- edition. What has the person that got some of this tried it yet? No. Okay. I was just curious. If they, they if they have, they have not told me. I want to know. I'd like to know um, after we get done. This is a double barrel blend God, of proof. thirteen and fifteen year old bourbons. One thirty two point two proof. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, I'm so excited to try this, man. I haven't even smelled it. If you're watching, <laughs> you may have saw my face just now. Damn, this has been a good episode. Yeah. What's up, chat? Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not breaking kayfabe. Um, I just need to find out what the, the price is real quick. What are they normally? They're normally like 150 I was going to say closer to like 250 but I could be wrong. Um, bu- 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 I'm gonna need you to smell that pretty soon. Oh, 175. Okay, based on the nose, and it does go all the money does yes. go to ALS research, uh, as well. Which Parker, uh, Parker Beam, who was the master distiller at Heaven Hill, uh, passed away from a few years ago. Yeah, so smell that, please. Corn pudding. 
I, I was going to say, <laughs> is there chocolate covered cornbread? That is, no, you're you're right. That is what it is. I mean, Mama just made some fresh cornbread, and you got a little bit of like chocolate pudding or something beside you, and you're kind of it's like this. Perry's leaving right now. Perry just left. I am on my own. He's gone. Um, he needed a minute. He's doing something. He's still there. He's back there. See him? Over there. Oh, my gracious. Oh. Parker me softly. What do you got? Oh, this one. I think it's time. I think it's time that we put this old girl to bed. It's been a good run. It has. <laughs> Tell them what you just pulled out. Well, it's the Heaven Hill Heritage Collection. First edition, 17-year-old, 118.2 proof. That came out that came out last year? I thought it came out this year. I but need to make some calls. We get, did we get a round to it, though? I feel like it... Was it right at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I feel like... Hold on. I can... Uh, I'll know. I just have to go back through my Instagram for a second, and I'll show you. <laughs> I thought you were just going to go into your mind palace or something. My mind palace? You never watched Sherlock? No. Oh, that's a shame. I can go to my uh, spirit room. I like that better. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Because you got the decanter with it. Remember? March 15th. Why does it say December 20th, 2021 on it? I guess that's maybe that's when they took it out of the barrel. I don't know. Maybe. We reviewed it. Uh, yeah, because it didn't come out until early this year. Yeah. So. March 15th episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, there you go. Did I just call barrel rings? <laughs> how did that happen? You le- you left of your own barrel rings. I don't even know how that happened. Oh my! Like, <laughs> look, they don't smell dissimilar. Mm-mm. They're both barrel proof Heaven Hill products. God. All right. I'm going to push the the one we've already reviewed yeah, to the side. Yeah. I'm going to come back to this. Oh. Tobacco fudge rounds. <laughs> Tobacco fudge rounds and chocolate covered cornbread. Yeah. When I went back to it, I was like, am I? Am I yeah. A fudge round and tobacco. Oh, my gracious. The mouthfeel and the finish on this. <sighs> oh, it's spicy, though. Yeah, it's got a spice. Oh, it's got heat. Wow. I mean, that's basically what? Elijah Craig Barrel Proof? It's more than most of the last couple of years yeah oh. now with that in mind though <clears throat> i mean if we we're to talk about pricing and everything i mean it's basically like twice what a an elijah craig barrel proof release would be but that being said there's two different years in there there's two different years and the money goes to als research mm-hmm. like <laughs> You can't you can't be like oh charity bottles, super overpriced. Can you? I don't know. I mean, I think if somebody went extraordinarily overpriced, like to where if somebody couldn't afford to help the charity, it'd probably be too much. Yeah. Um, otherwise, that is good. I'm a big fan. <laughs> It's really good. <laughs> I'm a big, big fan of this, man. It's dark. 
It's rich. It's, it's complex. There is this lingering note all the way through of salted caramel. It's an old school too. Lodge Creek Barrel Proof. It is. It is 100%. Yeah, if you like those old, even in like hazmat territory, Elijah Craig barrel proofs. This is up your alley. I mean, if you want a nostalgic pour mm-hmm. from Heaven Hill, uh, this this is it, man. Um, I uh, okay. I'm gonna hold off on making that statement for just a second. Uh oh. Mm. Okay. The oh, but the seventeen years got so much good going for it. The seventeen year is way more complex on the nose for one. Oh. Hmm. I would say there's more going on with the finish. It's a fuller experience with the finish on the the Heritage Collection, the 17 year. I think it's the proof. Or the spice. Yeah. Ah. It's tough, man. It's 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 like by a hair that I'm drinking the Parkers and I'm going. This might be the best thing that Heaven Hill has put out this whole year. I like it better than the Old Fitz 19. Oh, I, I think this is hands down better than the Old Fitz. And I love the Old Fitz 19. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, which you haven't heard me talk about. It. The episode's not come out. It's a bonus. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Either way. I'll get it out to you this week. Oh, God. Oh, I don't know. I don't know which one I like the most. Ugh. I think as somebody who's in, who enjoys a barrel-proof finish and that feel of barrel-proof, the Parkers is where it's at. If you like that subtle, like, like soft, complex, like... Here we are. The Heaven Hill 17 year might be where it's at. I don't know. That, that Parker's hits me well, this, harder. The 17 year. Yeah, no, I agree. The 17 year is more delicate. Yeah, that's a good way. To put you it. know, it, it's it's a softer sipper. It, it's a little bit more velvety. It's got more like mm. vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Going on. But the Parker's is just such an in your face spice bomb. With with cinnamon and clove, and there's so much oak that's going on with it too. This is more indicative to me of what it's like going on a barrel pick and being able to try <clears throat> bourbon straight from yeah. the barrel. Whereas the 17 year feels more curated to being a final product. So I, th- you know, you you have to kind of pick your battles in some way. Yeah. Like what do you what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? People are like, I want them both, you jerks. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I do, I do want them both, but God, I don't think it's, I don't think we can get the seven. I think it's sold out already. Oh no, it's been gone for a long time. Yeah. <sighs> but truly, mm. I mean, these are two great pours, great for different reasons. But I ha- <coughs> choked on my own ah! words. <laughs> Ugh. I have to go with the Parkers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it moved. The Parkers has moved ahead of the 17-year for me. And that was one of my top, mm-hmm. maybe one or two. Um, Man, this is just, it's, it's just everything you want from Heaven Hill. Like, yeah, uh, me thinking like, well, you got your bottle and bonds, you got this and that, but like, when I think of Heaven Hill, I'm thinking of like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, and this is like your special Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. 
and the double barrel of the two years, like there's oak and there's tobacco, but then there's sweet cornbread and stuff in it. Like this thing is a total pack. It's com- it, it is so complex. It's, <laughs> it's the whiskey or the bourbon that all bourbons aspire to be. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is a standard right here. You know, rate this thing. Yeah. <sighs> nose palette finish and price. Each category is out of five. Final score out of 20. Nose, Eric. I am going to give a 4.5. Five. Chocolate cornbread. Mama making chocolate cornbread. It's, dude, there's even a little bit of like malted milk. Like a, like a Whopper yeah. on the nose, too. That's that chocolate. I mean, chocolate cornbread. I don't know what that, if that's a real thing. Make it. Make it happen. I know Mama's not listening to this, but y'all make it. Palette is a five for me, though. Five. Uh, it's it's five. It's so rich. It's so invigorating. Like I just the, this this better than the some of the best logic bell proofs I've ever had. This creeps up into what I would consider to be like desert island pours <sighs> or. Yeah, you know some Last of the, four, the only best, four you can get. Yeah, some of the best, most memorable bourbons that I've ever had. I want, I want every bourbon to be like this. <laughs> I want it all. Finish. Can I just twenty? I'm giving it a twenty. This is a twenty out of twenty. I'm giving it a nineteen point five. This is a twenty out of twenty for me. Ah, screw it. It's a twenty out of twenty for me too. This is this is it. This is bourbon right here. Can you believe that we had two perfect scores this year? I mean, I can genuinely sit here and think of stuff that I've had that I thought was amazing. And this is, I mean, it's just it, man. This is top shelf, top tier. It's bourbon. This is is, is bourbon. It's sweet and oak and dark and like, from the nose to the palate to the finish, it is bourbon. And the price, I'm perfectly fine. I would I would pay double. Yeah. I would pay double that retail for this. It's not very often I would pay double, but yeah. I, I mean, I would prefer to pay it at retail. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But like, it's worth every bit of that and more. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is special. Yeah. Man. See, it's this kind of thing that makes me realize that this is, while it is arguably one of the best years of bourbon we have ever had, it's one of the more difficult ones, too, because there have been so many great things. I think it's easier for me to pick out the products that I haven't liked or the oh. products that I haven't given as high of a score to yeah. than trying to sift through all of the things where I'm like, well, you know, like I really like this for that reason or that bottle for this reason or bouncing back and forth like that. Like there's a lot of inner turmoil. Yeah. It's a very privileged opportunity to have. <laughs> yeah. Going back to our earlier conversation, but uh, I mean... <laughs> I wasn't expecting something like this to come into the game so late and score the score a touchdown the way that it did. I mean, this is this is hail mary. You just won the championship. I need to do some soul searching. I just need a bottle of that. Well, yeah, I'm that's wait it. Life. <laughs> Remember what I said about waiting in line for a bottle? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll see. I remember. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, you get a chance to get that, and you can afford it. I would, no regrets, full send. Thank you, Evan Hill. Yeah, thank for you. For sending us the sample. High proof hot takes. Soccer. You don't like it? No, I don't mind it. I don't like the flopping. Those guys get hit. Oh, yeah, it's the stupidest thing. I hate it. Women's Those, soccer is so much more enjoyable because they are tough as nails, dude. These guys get hit and they're like, oh, my, 
oh, they're rolling around, and then you know after they've got their extra time and stuff, they get up and walk away. Hate it, hate it. I think there's there the the best example of it is it was like a Real Madrid player or something. This is from a few years ago, but he barely got like touched by another player, and it was all caught on camera. I mean, there's like 80 cameras in a stadium yeah. at one given time, and he just is like. And like falls down and just makes a whole thing of it. And you're like, dude, come on. No, I'm not about there are, it. There are female soccer players, women soccer players who are who have been headbutted in the face and they're bleeding profusely. And they're like, bring me a towel. And they towel off, they dry off, and they go and they keep playing the game. Yeah. And they're incredible. Yeah. So I, I've been following the World Cup, but. I can't stand the flops and the over exaggerating hurt. Other than that, it's fun. So that was my hot. Take. I love soccer, man. Yeah, that was my hot take. Sorry, international football, football, football. Tips and bits. Tips and bits. You want to talk about Wednesday? I haven't finished. Oh, we finished it. So I got three episodes left. Okay, I'll finish it this weekend. Yeah, we'll hold off on it for a second. It's good. Do you have a Christmas something to recommend then? Holiday something to recommend for, um, for people? No. We just watched Christmas Vacation last night. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that since Thanksgiving. I love it. <laughs> like, it can play on and on. Nonstop. Um, yeah. Uh, Clark and his and Cousin Eddie and everything. I love it so much. Like, uh this was one of those viewings where I started noticing things that I had never noticed before. There's a lot of stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> when when Clark's peeking his head out from the the um, attic, he's trying to yell at everybody in the car. You realize that he has strung Christmas lights up the chimney, too. Um, in Russ's bedroom... You know, it pans up and like his granddad's sitting on the top bunk and he's looking up at the poster of the lady or whatever. At his head, behind the the headboard, (laughs) there's a poster of two giant tortoises going at it. Oh, I think I've seen that. (laughs) It is so funny. It's so just bizarre. Um, I, I love that movie so much. Say what you will about Chevy Chase. I know that he's been kind of problematic in years past. Uh, but yeah, just it, enjoy that. That's movie. it's that's a just... it's such a fun, fun watch. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm trying to think because I've I've been kind of living in a bubble. I've not got work. a chance. I've not got a chance to watch the new Christmas story yet. That's still on the queue. I haven't either. I might watch. I think what what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to watch that, and because Lucy and Eden are going to be gone Krampus. tonight. I've seen Krampus. I love Krampus, man. It's awesome. such a it's such a mess Krampus. of a movie. <laughs> it's not great, but I still love it. Um, I'm gonna watch Terrifier two and the new Christmas Story movie. <laughs> Got a long night ahead of you. I do indeed. Yeah, that's that. That's what you do when you're a bachelor for the weekend. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not a bachelor. I don't know what else you do? Um, I'll say I'll say this though. Um, so, um. This is the same handheld, essentially, that I've had for a few months at this point. It's the Retroid Pocket 3. Uh, It's basically used to emulate old video games, but they just came out with an update for it, like a completely new system and everything. Uh, The 3 Plus, higher processing power. You can play a lot of GameCube games. On it now too. Nice. I mean, I I'll show you real quick. I just started this um this Wind Waker file. But it is so it's so smooth. And I mean this is at a hundred percent native revolu native resolution, excuse me. Um I need to figure out how to get the controls off of the screen but it's essentially you've got <laughs> you've you've got a gamecube in your pocket that's amazing you know yeah um 150 for it um 
I've I've put a little bit more money into it just because I bought essentially like the the shell and the old hardware, the old yeah, the old hardware uh before the update came out. Uh but I bought the the new motherboard and everything and I installed it myself. I was really proud of myself for doing it. Um I only got frustrated a couple of times just with some like ribbon cables that I had to you have your tweezers out and your I actually your did magnifier glass. Like, Dude, Shh. I I was very meticulous with it, and I've always said I don't have very good uh, uh fine motor skills. But it was like a real win for me that I was able to do all that. Dude, so, I tried to I tried to fix my iPod one time. <laughs> Fucked it up. That's like the time I, I don't I don't remember if we documented this on the podcast or not. But there was a time when I think I had just lightly dropped the Zoom recorder and something came loose oh, no. internally. And so I, I took all the screws off, went in, and I just unplugged and replugged a few things and it turned on perfectly. It was so funny. It's like Swan and I were sitting here and he just absolutely died laughing. <laughs> it was so good, man. It was so good. Anyway, your tips and bits. Uh, I finally got to finish the last season of Atlanta. Have you watched Atlanta? I have seen the the first three seasons. Uh, I haven't seen four and five yet. Um, um, it's just four. I thought there was a fifth season Mm-mm. too. Fourth was the last. Oh, sorry. Okay, so third. Yeah, third is when they're in Europe. Haven't seen that yet. Okay. And then fourth, they come back and yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen three or four yet. Um, um, the first two seasons though are some of my favorite television of all time. It's so good. Atlanta is a great um, series. It obviously takes place in Atlanta around uh, a rapper and uh, his cousin who's managing him. If you've listened or heard of Childish Gambino, um, that is uh, the manager. Who is also one of my my favorite musicians? Uh, yeah, ever. Danny Glover. No, Donald. Danny Glover. Danny Glover. <laughs> no, I know it's Donald Glover. Um, He's too old for that. Yeah, but uh, no, it's a great <laughs> show. Uh, and it's it. There's weird episodes. There's, uh, I mean, season two has um, an episode where they kind of mimic uh, like a Michael Jackson story. Yes, Freddie Perkins, I think, is his name. Oh, it's so good. Did, didn't he show up to an award yeah, show yeah, that in that season. full makeup? Uh-huh. That's so good. But man. there's a lot and there's a lot of like uh themes on racism and things like that that they do it very well. Yeah. Uh it's kind of humorous, but it also there's stuff that can make you feel uncomfortable and that's okay to feel uncomfortable. Um but yeah, the fourth season is really good. Um it just kind of ends like there's not like some like Yeah thing and they i read a thing where cool he's like he didn't want it to feel like it was like a a wrap-up or anything because he always wanted to say like maybe we'll come back and do like a christmas episode or something like that. oh that'd be fun so yeah i think uh atlanta is a great show and i highly recommend it so donald glover childish gambino however you want to talk about him you know he he rarely tweets right his twitter feed is largely empty but every few months he'll like tweet something about a new project or yeah. or be like or like give it you know a prompt for an AMA and ask me anything. And within like 24 hours he'll delete it. But my favorite response is anytime that he posts on Twitter, anytime he tweets is usually like the top reply is babe wake up there's a new donald tweet <laughs> <laughs> and it kills me it kills me every time uh anyway uh, I, yeah I, he's great oh, man atlanta's phenomenal childish can be uh, because the internet because oh my god one of my favorite is one of my favorite i have it on vinyl um one of my favorite albums ever yeah. uh, and it's the, the what is what is the final track called uh, life the biggest troll something like or that. something like yeah. that so <laughs> before i bought the album i downloaded like a you know like a torrented or whatever a version of it before i like had money and yeah, could yeah, afford yeah. to buy music and the last track the biggest troll cut off about halfway through and i thought that was just an artistic choice because right, it cut right. off at like a perfect beat yeah sounds like i was our- like 
And then it was just two minutes of silence. Yeah. I was like, it's like our Patreon. And I thought, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I thought it was this really genuine, awesome artistic choice. And it was, it was just because I downloaded it from a sketchy website. Yeah. You know, it probably nerfed my entire iPod at that point or, or whatever. But, um, uh, because sweat, the sweatpants telegraph avenue oh my god oakland oh oh that's the same song, yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. so um, well that that has um 3005 on it yep. too which i i would categorize as one of my favorite songs of all time i can't you know? disagree <laughs> like genuinely it is i there was a when i first discovered that song i heard it on like 104.5 in lexington I think I shazammed it or something. I was like, this song is great. And then I forgot about it. <laughs> like a couple months later, I shazammed it again. I just could never like keep it in the, in my, my brain the way that I wanted to. Um, and then once I started like listening to it on my own, I, it was one of those songs like we talked about not too long ago where I just played it on repeat yeah. and played it on and just over and over and over again. Um, but Anything Donald Glover does, Charles yeah, Gambino. Yeah, so he's good. he's phenomenal. So creative, so inventive. Great stuff as well. I put him on the same kind of tier as uh, as a Jordan Peele. Mm -hmm. I would say. Oh yeah, some of his so. videos and some of the Atlanta episodes feel very Jordan Peelish. Um, I think I've actually recommended this too before, but um, he did uh, like a version. With uh, Triple J mm -hmm. in Australia. Uh, you can go watch the video on YouTube. Uh, but he covered Tania's So Into You, uh, which I still put as one of my favorite performances ever. Just great. The man's, it, I could I could go on and on mm -hmm. about him. Sober is an amazing song. That music video yeah. is so much fun. I love that. Anyway, I think that does it for this week. You my know my voice is dying. You know what's an amazing song? Patreon.com for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the show. And at $5, you get all the uncut stuff, the bonus episode. We're on Sampley Irresistible Season 3. It's over halfway through. Yeah, episode 5. And we dropped. got weird <laughs> on the pregame. Perry's chats. hot as a girl. Doesn't look like a sister. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, Patreon.com. Uh, support the show um, and we ask people questions there they can talk to us they can do whatever they can suggest things so go over there if you want to send an email to us and also suggest something or ask something whatever this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com send us a email and we'll get back to you if you want to get on the uh, bourbon rings Bourbon rings. Barrel rings. Barrel rings. What am I saying? This is my bourbon rings podcast. The barrel ring segment. We're losing them. I don't know. 859-428-8253. Leave us a message. We'll Tim, play it on there. Tim Brip. Tim Brip? <laughs> Tim Brick? What? I'm bricked up right now. Uh, if you want to get some merch, uh, this is my <laughs> bourbon shop. <laughs> Sorry. Bourbonshop.threadless.com. Uh, Perry put out some uh, Christmas stuff there. You can get some mugs, some coffee mugs, some sweaters. Drink your bourbon out of them coffee mugs That's for right. Christmas. Uh, Wish Mutant merch. Wishmutant.myshop5.com. WM25 for 25% off. Um, if you want to go to social media, it's at my bourbon pod on all social media. Leave us a DM, like us, reply, retweet, whatever. Just share. You can go on there. Uh, we have a Facebook group. We do. This is my Bourbon Podcast Facebook group. You can uh, get in on that. Uh, you can post anything in there. We don't care. Um, I, what What would you care if that they posted? Like, what would you like? No, that's probably too much. Anything? Nudes. Nudes? Like noodles? Yeah, don't post noodles. I like noodles. Immediate ban. Noodles? There's... Ramen? You don't like Ramen? Post your best nudes. I'll approve the ramen. I'm post, a, your, a, post your best nudes on the Smug Bourbon Podcast Facebook group this I week. I want to know what y'all pairing with bourbon and noodles. Not your Ooh. noodle. Not your personal noodle in your pants. Noodles that you've made. Ramen. Ramen noodles. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some homemade ramen tonight, I think. Can you make a This is My Ramen Podcast <laughs> shirt? 
Tim Rip. <laughs> Tim Rip. Rip it, baby. Hot. Who's Tim and why is he ripping it? Hot. Um, <laughs> YouTube.com. This is my burn podcast. Perry Thanks. Goes Live. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Perry Goes Live every Thursday at 8. Um, I try to join him when I can. Uh, we also have the video version of this. If you are listening, you can go to YouTube and watch us. Well, this is a very visual episode. And if you would like to listen to this, if that's how you prefer to do it, it's on your podcast app of choice as well. Yeah. Apple, oh, Google, if you're Spotify. you're a YouTuber and you only YouTube stuff and you're traveling and you don't want to wreck because you're trying to watch a video while you're driving, do what Perry said. The options are endless. Yes. Uh, leave a review. Uh, we'll read out any review. We prefer, prefer, we prefer five stars, but you know, we'll read a one star and then we'll probably shit on you if you give us a one star. Um, but then, uh, just tell people about us. Uh, we're always looking for new friends, new listeners. Um, and we love you. And that's an episode, I think, right? That's a whole daggum episode. That's a daggum episode that's right a there. Big old boy. All right. Big old boy. Thank you all so much, as always, for listening. Uh, big stuff to come in 2023. We actually didn't get to it this week uh, in the way that I was kind of hoping we would, but I think we got through enough. <laughs> I think I think people got plenty. I think we've to done it. enough this week. <laughs> AI Art Perry as a girl, hot. See y'all real soon. Until next week, I'm Perry. I'm Eric the Whiskey Mute. And this is my bourbon podcast. And we're clear. <laughs> and we're clear. <laughs>